FG back at you again. Yes, yeah, been a busy weekend uh, getting some projects done here and uh, just uh, knocking out a few things that I had in mind for my truck for uh, quite a while. Uh, this one's a little more unusual. Um, I'm going to switch to the view uh, away from me and to the workbench and I'll show you what's going on over here and uh, hopefully y'all might be a little bit inspired by this idea and think that it's uh, pretty interesting and maybe want to copy it. Okay, so here's what's actually going on. Now this might look a little confusing because there's one piece of metal crossing the frame here and yes, that's not going to stay there. That's actually the piece that's about to get cut, but if you see what I'm doing over here, I've got a short leg and then I've got a longer leg and this is going to get another leg at the other end here so it's going to form uh, an inverted C shape or a flipped U or however you'd like to describe that and this is going to get mounted to the back of my toolbox in the truck itself. Um, mine is a Pro 4X so it came with uh, what they call the Attila strut system uh, which has different parts that can be bolted on and uh, the factory provides four cleats. I went ahead and bought four more from one of the other members who wasn't using them so I now have eight and they are extremely handy. I will show that in the later part of the video. And uh, so this is just going to be a frame that I'm going to mount, which is going to then allow me to tie things directly onto my very large steel toolbox, which will expand the uh, capabilities of um, tie down points, angles, etc. And uh, I think it's going to be a very useful and helpful um, system. And a, a fast note for all you who have. Uh, Tacomas who might be somehow watching this. I'm going to see if I can possibly get this over to the Toyota folk as well. If you take this, which is called Super Strut, they sell this at Lowe's. It comes in 10 foot lengths. It comes in two types of rail. It comes in a half height. If you look at this one, you can see that it's thinner than it is tall. And it also comes in a full height, and this is basically a knockoff of Unistrut, which is a trademarked name and is used in warehouses a lot for hanging lighting or conveyor equipment, etc. It's a very flexible, very nice system. And why I mention this is that Nissan, at least once in a while, gets pretty smart and designed their Utilitrack system around the same dimension so all the parts and fittings that can be used with Super Strut will also fit the Nissan Utilitrack. So if you were to go to Lowe's, purchase some of this rail, cut it to the length that your Toyota already has and mount that on top of your factory rail, you could then use all the Nissan parts which are probably going to be easier to find and might actually be a little cheaper, I don't know. But I'm going to show you the tie down cleat later that Nissan uses and I'm not sure what Toyota's looks like because I don't own one but I wouldn't be too surprised if uh, you might find that the Nissan part might actually be more flexible and more useful in this particular application so uh, like I said I'm gonna come back to that in a little while I'm gonna go ahead and pause now while I cut the second piece and we'll get out to the truck in the next frame and I'll show you how everything is going to fit up and I think that you'll probably have a much better idea what it is that I'm attempting to describe when you actually see it uh, the whole thing about uh, pictures in a thousand words I think so uh, signing off for now and uh, catch you on the flip side yeah, another quick note before we get back to it when dealing with well really any type of metal steel parts aluminum whatever they happen to be you're gonna want to make sure that the ends that you're cutting that you dress them properly the last thing you really want to do is snag your pants or cut a finger on a sharp bit of metal that you've got left over. And that can be a little bit of a difference sometimes between what makes a project look pretty good or makes a project look like it was really, really done uh, underneath uh, the big oak tree in the backyard. So you can see that I used my power grinder here, which is buzzing away right now, getting ready to do the next one. I went ahead and dressed all of the cuts here and this is going to be the left side outside here so if you can see if I can get the angle here and get it to focus that I put a down angle chamfer on the edge there to uh, minimize the possibility of catching 
pair of pants or anything like that on the edge. Just uh, something that kind of makes the project a little more professional. After I get done squaring all this up, I'm going to paint all this with uh, black spray paint. This is already gold galvanized, so it's actually not going to rust, although it's going to be located underneath of my uh, truck's tonneau cover, so I'm not really worried about it getting rained on much. It's going to be dry, but just uh, the idea that I like to keep everything nice. So I'm going to go ahead and paint that black so it'll match the bed liner, and I'm using stainless steel hardware to go ahead and screw everything down when I get the holes drilled into the actual toolbox and uh, that way 10 years from now it should look just as nice as it will today God willing and uh, also the other important flip side always remember your safety glasses okay everybody here we are we're back again I'm in the bed of the truck now and I think you can probably get a better idea of what's happening here now so you can see here's the first rail mounted pan back a little bit this is going to be the horizontal rail I'm gonna have two rails on the verticals here I went ahead and marked out my holes so that I could get them properly drilled and this is a funny cabinet it looks pretty flat on the outside but there's an awful lot of stuff going on on the inside there's steel reinforcing panels welded in and actually on both sides there are recesses for a handle so to make sure that I didn't end up going inside that channel, I had to be very careful where I ended up drilling my holes. I ended up putting holes in different places on the left side and the right side because of the way the channel ended up cutting and the uh, existing slots that are already made into it from the factory. Here you can see temporarily the uh, stainless bolts holding everything in place. This is just mocked up. I'm going to take everything down and paint it all when it's finished. But I had to make sure that I didn't block the access for the padlocks, as you can see, which are recessed into the box. And when they're shut, if you don't have a key, you're pretty much out of luck. Unless you've got a torch that you could cut through the side of the toolbox itself with. And that would probably, most likely, ruin or set on fire anything on its contents. So I don't think you're really going to want to try that stunt. So I feel pretty confident about this thing being... Uh, fairly secure. When it's loaded, it weighs about 200 pounds, and it's bolted to the bed of the truck into the uh, factory uh, utility track. Which, uh, here you can see some of what the factory has installed, including the mount that I put for my axe and uh, my shovel. Uh, the bed's a bit of a mess right now, so apologies for uh, the fact that it looks like it's got a lot of things going on, because it does. It usually doesn't look like this. But anyway, you can you can see these are the cleats that I was talking about, and these are a Nissan factory item. Uh, unfortunately, from Nissan themselves, they're about fifty-five dollars each, which I think is kind of ridiculous. I have eight of them, so that would would have been over four hundred dollars. The truck came with four, and I managed to score four more for a total of fifty dollars from another Club Frontier member who swore that he would never need them. So I was very happy to remove them from his hands. So as I'd mentioned. If any of the people out there that don't have this rail installed in their Nissan or they actually own a Tacoma, if you were to go ahead and mount a piece of this rail on top of your existing factory rail, you could then use all of these accessories. As you can see, these slid in very nicely. I took one of these with me over to the store when I went to purchase to uh, double check to verify that I didn't need the full depth metal rail, which I'm kind of glad I didn't because that is a 12 gauge piece of steel. This is 14 and that was enough of a challenge to cut with a hand hacksaw. Uh, 12 gauge I'm thinking would probably be uh, quite a little bit of a wrestling match and uh, so yeah if that makes me sound lazy I guess I'm lazy but uh, that was enough of a workout cutting these two uh, to length. I found that uh, when you're in your 50s you don't uh, do as many things in a day as you did when you were in your 20s. <laughs> and I'll bet a lot of you can identify with that. So uh, that's the progress up to now, and I'm going to go ahead and finish out the video when everything's mounted up and show you how the project looks completed.
right, everybody, here we are. It's uh, actually pretty much finished now. You can see I painted the rails black and went ahead and mounted them up. Uh, I've got the cleats installed and the uh, auxiliary fuel tanks are strapped down again. I'm going to come up with some kind of a better mounting sometime in the future, but uh, this is pretty much what I've got right now. So I'm not in love with it, but it does the job. They're empty, so they're not very heavy, so not a big deal right now. And uh, you can see my funnel and some other tools there that I carry in the truck. There's a shovel that runs underneath the toolbox. And I uh, carry a spare jug of oil just in case I had an off-road excursion issue. And as you can see, I'm able to mount the uh, Nissan cleats to tie downs vertically and horizontally. I think it worked out pretty good. I'm uh, pretty happy with uh, the end result. Looks Looks good. So uh, that's it. That's uh, all for today.